Hey, what's shaking? Welcome back to the worm. The worm still stands. I've decided, even though it's getting to be summer, I'm going to electrify the cabin. I think I uh, might have described this in a couple earlier videos. You guys know I just use uh, like portable power stations for all my year-round power needs here. Of course, in the summertime, or uh, the bright months as I like to call them, I don't really have to run the generator. I think the only thing I use it for is sometimes like to run the big planer or I mean if I'm doing a big project and have to cut a lot of straight lines I'll start it up for the circular saw the corded circular saw but I don't use it for charging batteries because I've got these guys right now they're churning away on both the batteries 100% 95% but because I'm so, <laughs> I'm so big on planning way far ahead I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Put, I think just one plug in the cabin it seems to be in the you know late fall winter early spring when it's snowing and sleeting and raining and all that stuff seems to be the time I need to charge these batteries the most but yeah I only sit inside when the weather's crappy that's when I edit videos that's when I use the most power I run the batteries down and then I need to charge them and I can't really run the generator when the when the weather's junk and when I have had to do it I'll start the generator over here, kind of like shield it with a little bit of a tarp. I'll take an extension cord, run it in the window. I usually use that to charge the smaller Jackery because it doesn't draw as much power. And like the Ryobi batteries, stuff like that, I can do that all off of one power cord. And then the other Jackery, the big one, has a really fat power cord and it draws, I don't know, like 1100 watts. Just a ton of power, so I don't really want to run an extension cord to it. So I end up bringing the big fat jackery out here, having to tarp that up too. Anyway, I just thought it'd be fun to try to do a little uh, electrical wiring here. I'm thinking about putting an outlet underneath here, maybe just on the inside of this board up underneath. Let's go see what it looks like inside. I'm going to have to disassemble some of the wall, so I might have to do this in a weird way so as not to have to unbolt and remove all the furniture in here. Of course, I'm thinking I'll probably do that anyway this summer, but... I don't know. I just kind of want to do this electrical thing now. Once I have the uh, bag full of goodies, like I've already done the shopping, I, I kind of want to do it. So we were, we were just looking outside about right here. We could go up inside that wall. And then we could run the cord through here, around the corner. And I'm thinking we might just stay along the bottom of the wall to go through there. And then we could just go up once right through one set of studs. There's a stud there. There's a stud there. And maybe put one right here because that's where the small jackery usually sits. Normally you'd run the wire horizontally, not right at the floor. But if I brought it up even just a foot or two, all of this crap would have to come out of here. The other reason I'm really interested to do this is, as you guys know, sorry for repeating myself ad nauseum, all of this cabin was built with chainsaw milled lumber that was green, that was wet. And my thinking is, as long as it's not sealed in by a vapor barrier on both sides, eventually the moisture is going to get out. I don't know. It's possible I'll take some of these boards off and there'll be mold. But it's been almost a month now that the humidity's been down like 40%, 30% some days. And I have been, maybe once every 3-4 weeks, been taking the moisture meter around, checking all the boards I can see just to make sure that there's not a spot that the, you know, the moisture is still up at 80%. As you probably remember, when I put the wall boards up on the inside here, it was winter. These were green boards that were then frozen. A lot of cases, they were like snowed on, melted, frozen. I brought them in here and had to set a lot of them up with a heater underneath and a dehumidifier. And the ice would melt and the water would just run down. I mean, they were completely saturated. So at some point, I did take all the a bottom course off all the way around the cabin, peeled up the insulation... And that bottom plate was, I mean, it was a lot of water in there. So I left fans on, put the humidifier in here, ran the generator for like a week to get some of the humidity out. Anyway, now I think it's dry enough. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I'm really curious to look under there and see if that bottom plate has, I don't know, what's the moisture content going to be? I have a hunch it's going to be dry and it's not going to be a problem. And then I will feel redeemed. My crazy ideas will be, I mean, everybody will be doing it like this. Everybody will build a cabin with wet lumber. You know what else I was meaning to do when I do the wiring? I got this roll of flashing. 
what is this? Six inches by 50 feet aluminum flash flashing. I'm gonna use this to wrap the legs in the cabin. How many other? I think nine legs total that are just the rounds from a tree that are holding this whole thing up. I'm gonna wrap each one. It'll keep, I, the mice are just appearing right now. I don't think they hibernate. I don't know where they've been all winter, but I've seen them around. And it'll keep them from climbing up the legs, I think. It's nice and nice and slick. So I have to remember to get to that when we're under there. Man, this new driver has a really great light on it. You could almost use that for a flashlight. I always thought that the lights on this part of the drill were better because it's just kind of shining right where you're working, but Man, that thing's really nice. <laughs> now that this uh, shelf wood is dried out, it fits in there a lot, a lot easier. Oh no. <laughs> I think that edge right there is enough that I can't get this out without taking this off. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Screw that, I'll cut that corner off. Wait a minute now. Can I just take those screws out? See, it's a good thing I got a new driver. See how short that is? That's great. Oh, it's barely fit. Uh-oh. <laughs> just ignore that bragging I was doing a second ago. cut it off just to get it back in there but hey we got it out I can tell there was moisture down here these are a tiny bit corroded on the tips of them there it is I don't see anything growing feels dry looks dry let's pull some staples and stick the tester in there Oh, it feels pretty dry. Oh, we got some moisture. 17%. That's not great, but it continues to go down. I think it's going to be all right. I mean, we got to take, we're going to see almost half the cabin on the bottom here. Pull all the uh, insulation up and just check it all. Yeah, it's not bad in there. That's got to be the worst place in the whole cabin. Did you expect mold and a bunch of rot? Let's just say I'm pleasantly surprised at what it looks like in here. Pretty good. The highest number I've seen so far is 18 and a half. Ooh, 19. Almost 19. Let's see how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna come up through there, or maybe well, might as well do there if it's all the same, because then we don't have to drill through those three. I know sometimes people don't believe me when I say I don't know what I'm doing. Like, how can you not know what you're doing but build an entire cabin from trees with a chainsaw? Every step of the way, I just kind of wing it. I mean, I've done some building, some stuff before. So, like, a general knowledge of how things go together. I know what a 2x4 is. I know how a very basic wall is framed. You know, I've replaced receptacles and stuff like that. But I've never done all this stuff, like, straight from my brain, trying not to look anything up. And I don't really know that much about wiring. I think I got the right size wire, but... I don't know how you're supposed to drill through a 2x4 corner, especially down low like this. So you have a 2x4, another 2x4, another 2x4, and then you've got one going this direction to all of them. And that's what makes up that whole thing. It's one, two, three, and then one this way. So that's uh, that's solid right there in that corner. You know, I really don't want to like set this thing on fire or electrocute myself, but short of that, you guys know, I just want the experience. I like figuring stuff out. 
And even if it does all go up in a mushroom cloud, I'm like, I'm kind of okay with that too. Instead of putting the outlet on the bottom of the cabin here or here, how about we just put it right there? So the extension cord will just run, plug in right underneath that bottom plate. And then somehow we'll drill through there. Then we just have to come over one, two, three studs. We have to drill three holes that way and then just go up, I don't know, uh, next to, behind, in front of the uh, insulation there. Let's have a look-see out here and see how that might work. And I guess I was thinking of maybe making like a generator roof right here. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It could still be right here. The generator sits here. I mean, you could put it underneath there, but it's hard to start when it's stuffed underneath something. So if it sat right there, you could still pull the cord. And then you only need a, what, like a three-foot extension to get it right about there. You see? You see how just using your brain, uh, your brain a little bit, will occasionally allow you to figure stuff out? I won't be surprised at all if I'm not doing this the way the professionals do, but uh, I bet it'll work. Let's see what we got. So we got this guy for the outside. How many plugs do we get? I got GFI can go in there. And how do you run the wire out? Looks like probably out the back here. Uh, seems like this is supposed to go through the wall. Maybe we can, uh, oh, maybe we can 3D print a box just like a standoff for this. Make it stick out this far. Put a hole through the top of it. Just spitball in here. Hmm, there we go. Maybe we can, if I could center this right on the bottom plate underneath. Have the wire. See, we don't need, I told you, there's no reason to 3D print anything. Now, wait just a minute. It makes sense that this is supposed to go up against the wall and that would stick through. I, I told you we were going to need to 3D print something. Gosh, nobody ever listens to me. Okay, I'm just about to drill the hole through the bottom plate and I ran into something I just can't quite think out. I think with everything I want to run off this and through that one plug, it's going to be right at the maximum. So if I say this stuff now, by the time you hear it, it'll be way too late to do anything about it. But I just, I'm gonna put this out there, think through it for a second so you know why this place went up in flames. Okay, so a normal wall plug is 15 amps and 14 gauge wire, I believe is 15 amps. This generator is 1800 watts at 120 volts. Is that 15? I think that's 15 amps. The only thing I'm really caught up on, this is the one power cord for one of the Jackeries, the bigger Jackery, and it can draw way more power than the smaller one when you charge. This has a 14 gauge wire. It's only like five feet long. Now, if you're going from the generator through a 14 gauge little short extension cord, through the wall, through a whole bunch of 14 gauge wire into a plug, then you plug this in, you essentially continued 14 gauge but made it way longer. I'm okay with that. The problem is, then when you plug a second Jackery into the same outlet, and maybe even some Ryobi batteries, now you're pulling, say, 30% more power through a longer 14 gauge cord. I did call the generator company and ask them if it made any difference if I pull all the power from one of these plugs on the front or if I should split it and go through two different wires. So I could do two extension cords from this up to my plug. I could double these wires and I could actually go to two plugs. And the guy at the generator shop said it doesn't make any difference. It's the same thing. Pull it all from one or pull it from both. Let's see what our one plug outside is. 15 amps. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't for that fat cord to the one bigger Jackery, I wouldn't even think about this. But it seems like everything's going to be completely maxed out. And I guess, I mean, that has an overload popper. If you draw too much power, it'll pop it. This is GFI, so this should pop too. I don't know, what's the worst case? It just pops those if I plug too much stuff in. Can you hear me in there? Still, nobody responds. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you will in three or four weeks when this video comes out. I was thinking I could somehow attach this to this and screw this like up underneath. Or, yeah, I guess it'd be straight up. But this is weatherproof. I mean, it's going to be up underneath there. It's not going to get a lot of weather, but 
It's got all sorts of holes in it and stuff. It's gonna get full of bugs and spiders and whatnot. I could take the time. I could four-wheeler out of here, get in my car, drive somewhere and see if I could find a box that's made for this. I don't know if they actually make them. And I figure by the time I did that, I could probably just 3D print my own. At least this way, I'll get exactly what I need, exactly what I'm thinking of. Because there's a good chance you're not supposed to do this at all, or nobody would ever do this like this, and there's not a box. A box doesn't exist exactly like what I'm looking for. I made it as simple as possible. So, let's see how long it takes to print. It's probably going to be a few hours. Which is fine, because it'll probably take me that long to get... Ooh, maybe I should move this right in the way of the wall I need to get into. We'll let that print and go drill some holes in the floor. Let's see, the floor frame should be under this side. So I think we gotta come out about as far as possible while st still keeping that inside the wall. Since I'm jammed in here, I might as well go sideways too with my drill. Oh, it just barely fits. Bet I hit a nail from the exterior there. Uh, man, so much for my good bit. Oh yeah, I took the end right off it. Huh. I think that's why you run the wire through the middle of the stud, not through like a side or just, you know, lay it right on the edge of the stud. Because you don't want to hit the, the electric wires with a nail. The good thing is the interior boards are already on here. And I can see that's one screw for the board that goes here and there's the other. So anywhere in between should be all right. So I guess I can go down a little bit. I'll just jog and try not to hit that nail again. Oh my gosh, that's so much duller. <laughs> straight down through three studs out the floor. <laughs> huh. I don't know if I showed you guys these when I put them up in the man cave. I'm just using them. Actually, I'm putting my silverware in here. In the man cave, I was just putting tools in it. These are uh, air intakes for uh, probably off a of Chris Craft. So on the gunnel of the boat, you know, if they've got an inboard, it sticks up, scoops the air, and it goes down through a big pipe down into the engine to cool it. I've had them forever, couldn't just throw them out and finally found a use for them. It's pretty freaking handy. I could go all the way to this back wall and actually feed the wire down without just catching a whole bunch of insulation. I guess I could try it. I think it'll go down there. Yeah, not really. So it'll be a lot easier to run it down here. Ah, uh, you know what I just thought of? Instead of pulling two wires through the wall, I think if I did put a second outlet in, I'd want it right over there next to that jackery. That's the one I use 80% of the time. I bet 80 to 85% of the power that I use just goes to my computer, just editing videos. So I'm either sitting there or sitting in bed. And I guess if I'm going to the trouble to put outlets inside where I could easily recharge things, it would make sense to just put the outlet right where the power is needed. Oh no, what a schmuck I am. <laughs> gonna say it'd be way easier to run the power wire underneath the cabin and then just pop up between the studs that you want yeah I was so obsessed with getting the box right in that corner where the generator is gonna be didn't even cross my mind to do the run underneath 
Well, I mean, all we did is pop up and go through, what, three studs, so that's not a big deal. But I've only got 25 feet of the wire. I won't be able to make it all the way across there, so we'll just forget about that one for right this moment. Don't you think we can forget about it? Yeah, let's forget about it. I uh, hesitate to even show you that I'm doing this because I don't want anybody to watch a second of this and get any ideas from me. This is a horrible thing to learn from me. The only thing you'd learn from me about wiring is like how to electrify your kitty cat. The only thing that'll make a project harder, especially a, a project you don't know how to do all that well, is to try to record yourself make a video of it you know try to be a smart ass while you're doing the work you know when was the last time i mentioned that you should never try to learn anything from a ringworm video if it was more than a week or two i'm i apologize like a thing. I gotta say, when I moved out here to the woods, I did not ever imagine a day I was gonna have power outlets. It's pretty weird. Just like the couch, I just, I don't know if I'm ready for it at this point in my life. It's, a, it's kind of a bit much. So this fits that gasket nicely. Nothing fancy, but it's gonna give a standoff. So I can stick that directly up underneath. And then I'll put screws all the way through here. I think in these little divots I can drill out. Put screws all the way through, right into the bottom of the cabin. I don't think this is necessary, but I kind of wanted to do it anyway. It's one of those moments where I need more hands. <laughs> I think there's a good reason they don't build these like this. There it is. You know what I just noticed? Somebody's got a storehouse here. Luckily there's not much place for them to stand or hang out. That's cool. That worked out just fine. It's always good to have a 3D printer around. Uh-oh, we're back to doing crunches under here. Alright, only thing we got left to do here is we need two male ends. So about this. We'll just lop this cord off somewhere. Shorter is better because you have less resistance. This is only a 15 foot cord. I have no idea if it makes any difference if I cut it back to three or leave it 15. I mean the thing's definitely going to be within five feet of the generator. How about we just cut this in half?
as much as I want to plug this in and try it right now, I'm going to do the flashing first. I've got my computer processing a video on one of the Jackeries to try to get the Jackery worn down a bit. If they're not down to a certain percentage, then uh, when you plug it in, it won't do full draw. You know, they charge fast up to like 80% and then the current tapers off to get it all the way up to 100. So I'm trying to get them both down to 50 or 60 so we can plug them up in. I, you know, I want to plug it in for a few minutes, see that it works, but uh, then I'm going to shut the generator off and we're just going to go use the solar panels anyway. But uh, let's see how we could flash these. Maybe we should measure a couple of these out first. Maybe I'll cut, yeah, just cut one sheet off of here, guess at it. 32, let's call it three feet, three feet times nine feet. I think that's somewhere in the neighborhood of carry the six, 20, let's say 30 feet-ish. I bet I'm going to have to take the chainsaw and smooth some of these off. Looked at a couple of them, they've got big knots. Not here, not here, not here, so there's no flat spot to put this. And you know how mice can squeeze through anything. It's gonna have to be pretty flat on here. Roofing nails, think that'll work all right. That is nice. Yeah, check this one out. Gonna have to round that off. Yeah, there's one on the top, there's one on the bottom, so gonna have to cut something. Let's do that one. Yeah, I think they could fit their stupid little heads up through there. Probably their entire stupid little bodies. Maybe we just pin it down. Would you swing this? This is very awkward for me. Hello? Nobody there. Uh-huh. No stupid little heads now. While we're back here, let's see how our propan's doing. Oh yeah get uh, one out so this tank this 40 pounds lasted in the neighborhood of a month I am using this every morning when I wake up might be you know high 40s low 50s in the cabin don't really have to turn the heat on but because I have it I do it it was a lot of time out here with no heat even through the winter so I, I just think it's fantastic you guys should get heat I, I think you'd really like it thing I'm really looking forward to, and I don't know exactly why, is building a weird roof over these. I do have two more tanks for back here, so I don't know if we'll do them like square or long. I want to build a weird roof. I mean, I was just going to do something down like this, but I think we might as well give it some character if we got to go to the work of uh, milling the lumber and uh, putting it together. Maybe do like uh, two pitches or like some weird sides or something. I don't know. We'll figure something goofy out, and I'm, I will, I will do it before winter. I swear on 40 pounds of propane. Hmm, can't get the chainsaw underneath here. Put it near the bottom and hope they're not good jumpers. I don't know, they could probably, eh, you know, sometimes you gotta live on the edge, take a few risks. What do we do about my uh, pretty funny weird one? I mean, I could wrap it around the bottom, but I have to do a lot of cutting from underneath somehow. Plus it still curves out to start with. Well, maybe I just wrap it and it's gonna look a little weird.
Yep, I hit it. I saw the spark. I think that's about all I can do. Well, even if it doesn't work, it's only one foot out of nine. So I'll only get one ninth as many mice inside. That's not bad. I just realized that mice can climb stairs, so let's see if we can block this off somehow. Excuse me, salamander face. Keep it moving. What do you think? This is going to dull up my wood chisel pretty nicely. It's loud. Should have worn. I well, probably couldn't fit my helmet underneath here. I don't know how anybody goes through their daily life without wearing a chainsaw helmet. You just, you know, you got to be safe. If you could see this, I'd do it a little bit prettier right here. Oh man, maybe you can see it. Well. I can't sit under here any longer. Uh, get me out. Ugh. I was thinking there's a chance a mouse could stand up here and hop over onto that brace, as you can see there. Were it not for that, I don't know that they'd get up here. Maybe they would. So put some metal on that and then wrap it all the way around the side and the same on the back. Perhaps that'll work. I don't know. We'll see. I'll keep some cheese out right by the couch so uh, if they do show up, I can do a proper census. All right. Let's say we do it. I'm not nervous, but i um, not completely confident that it's just going to work. The whole thing's going to work. Oh, I also just remembered that... Uh, Last time I used the generator when I was doing the planing for the picnic table, the generator was running like crap. I never did figure out what the problem was, but it seemed to run alright for like the first 5 or 10 minutes, so should be long enough for our test. Please run, please run, please run. Let's start with the lesser load. Can you hear the generator? Nothing. Maybe see if the GFI's tripped? Weird. I don't know what the deal is. Not getting current here. Uh, I tested the extension cord that I made just to make sure, you know, <laughs> there's a reason you don't have two male ends on any extension cords. And there's a reason I'm always going to plug the extension cord into the cabin first. You get the generator running, plug one end of the cord into it. The other end is live with the prongs sticking out. It's kind of freaky. I thought maybe there was a bad connection in that new male end that I spliced onto the extension cord. That has power through it. The only thing I can think... <laughs> it's funny that there's any issue at all. It's two plugs and a wire. Well, I mean a little bit more, but... I don't know exactly how GFIs work. I mean, generally in a circuit, you're going through a wall, it's the first one in line. So you've got four plugs on the same circuit, you put the GFI in the beginning, and that gives you protection for all of them. You don't have to have a GFI in every single one. But I don't know how it works when you're running power in the opposite direction. I'm wondering if that's not the problem. Because there's no way to test the GFI, because there's, you know, there's a plug sticking into it, so you can't get to the uh, test and reset button. I do have... One more plug. I'm going to go switch it out. I won't be surprised if that fixes it. You, you stay there, I'll be back. All right, should we try this again? I think it's going to work. All right, this is the winning light right here. 
<laughs> you see that? Can you see? Can you look at it? Okay. Sweet. That's great. I'm going to turn the generator off for a minute and just switch this outlet out. All right. Got that in there. The only downside is that I got the cream color tan to go with the wood. This is supposed to be outside and it's white and I don't have a switch plate for it. But I think for now that'd be all right. Yeah, that's okay. I'm guessing this should pop now. Yep. Oh, we got it turned on. Look at that. We can even tell there's power there. Oh, saw a little spark. That's a good sign. All right, so we're drawing 265 watts. That's about as much as this thing uh, will take. So let's just see here. 265 by 120 is only 2.2 amps. Oh, we should have plenty of sauce to do this then. This one draws, I think about 1100 divided by 120, 9.1. Yeah, so we should have a few free amps. Well, let's try this out then. So you should be able to hear the generator. It'll rev the generator, settle back down, and then rev and start charging this. So we got 265 on that. Have a listen. Give it a second. Blip. There it goes. Input 1058 plus 265 equals divided by 120. We should be drawing 11 amps. If I didn't know better, I'd say 11 amps is less than 15. I think we're set. Man, that generator doesn't sound good. That's freaking fantastic. Clearly, clearly, I'm using a lot of this stuff in a way that's not meant to be used. It's probably not safe. But if you think it all through, it's basically one long cord going from the generator all the way up through the wall to this plug and into the uh, two jackeries. So I think we're good. And I think having that GFI here makes a lot more sense. I mean, you know, you think you always put it at the beginning of the circuit. That is the beginning of the circuit down there. But the power was going the wrong way for the plug. So this is sweet. All right, let's shut that off and uh, charge these the right way. Uh, it's 3.30. We're not going to get them all the way charged today, but... Let's use the sun. Usually if I have all day, I'll just bring both of these out here, plug two panels into one, two panels into the other one. By the end of the day, they're totally charged. But we only have about uh, two hours left of sun, so this is at 54%. Well, it's taking... 428 watts right now at that rate it take 3.7 hours to get it fully charged so we'll be pretty close hey we got it working it's kind of amazing now i'm ready for winter again even though it's finally up in the 60s i must be sick right who gets ready for winter in the beginning of spring well i gotta do some thinking about my next couple projects i have so much stuff i want to be working on it's like i can't stand in any place here, turn around 360 and not find three things I want to do. I do need to get my tent set up pretty quick. So maybe in the next week, I'll rip my uh, tent deck apart, do a little fixing on that. I might actually have to pour some concrete for uh, like the footing right in the middle of it. You, you want to look at it? There's a sag in the middle and along that edge. Not in the corners because the corners are stumps. Those will be there forever. They're cedar stumps. That's a pine round, that's aspen, and that's like soft as can be. You could just, you can stick your finger into it. It's not really supporting that side as much as, as it is holding up the stairs, but that's gonna have to be replaced with something, so I'll have to do a little chainsaw work to uh, fit that step back in there. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, I built this, oh, I don't know, like a month or two after coming out here to the middle of the woods when there was nothing out here. Didn't really know what I was doing. Didn't know how to build with a chainsaw. Certainly didn't know how to build with logs. But I just used whatever I had on hand. Like that is a cedar log. I would say it's not big enough to go that span. So at the time, I just stuck around underneath it. That's not doing a whole lot. So yeah, there's a little bounce in this side. Anyway, stuff like that I gotta take care of. So we may just rip, I don't know, I might just rip all the boards off of this. <laughs> a lot of the frame, the log frame, uh, I didn't even peel. I mean, I was really dumb. I was super dumb back then. I got to be at least like 
three or four IQ points above that now. Got to fix this thing, got to set up my tent. I want to build a refrigerator. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. Right now, I'm going to grab the 22 and go down to the shooting range. I just need to like cool off for the rest of the day. You know, it's been a lot of thinking. Anywho, thanks much. Thanks for watching. Uh, come back next Saturday morning if you like. We'll, uh, we'll do something stupid. Maybe we'll electrify a tent or something. See ya.